Over 390 million miles from Earth, in the freezing outer reaches of our solar system, orbits a moon that defies logic and expectation. Io, one of Jupiter's largest moons, is a place where reality seems to twist under unimaginable pressure. This tortured world seethes with fire, blanketed in sulfur and cloaked in alien colors, reshaped daily by forces that would rip any earthly landscape apart. It's a world that shouldn't exist the way it does, and yet it persists, a vivid testament to the violent complexity of the cosmos. Io is not just another moon, it's a paradox in motion. While most moons are cold, cratered, and geologically dead, Io is a living engine of volcanic fury. Beneath its crust lies a churning inferno powered not by tectonics or radioactive decay, but by the invisible hand of gravity. Jupiter's immense gravitational pull, combined with the orbital tug of war from its neighboring moons Europa and Ganymede, keeps Io in a constant state of tidal torture. Its orbit is slightly elliptical, and that tiny irregularity is everything. It means Io is constantly being stretched and compressed over and over again, like a ball of putty in the hands of a god. This friction generates intense internal heat, melting rock and creating vast underground reservoirs of magma. Unlike Earth, where volcanoes are scattered and sporadic, Io's entire crust is under pressure. It doesn't merely erupt, it convulses. Its volcanic activity is so extreme that the moon's entire surface is regularly repaved with fresh lava. There are more than 400 active volcanoes across its face, and at any given time, dozens may be erupting. Plumes of molten material can soar hundreds of kilometers into space before falling back to the surface, coating it with new layers of chemical dust and ash. Io's landscape is both beautiful and terrifying. Vast calderas stretch for hundreds of kilometers. Jagged mountains rise abruptly from lava plains. And then there are the colors, surreal swirls of yellow, red, white, and green that look more like an abstract painting than a celestial body. These colors aren't just decoration. They are the fingerprints of exotic chemistry. The yellow hues come from elemental sulfur, a substance released during volcanic eruptions. Reds and oranges mark areas of recent activity, where sulfur molecules have been twisted and burned by the heat. White patches are frost, sheets of frozen sulfur dioxide that condense when the atmosphere collapses. And green? A product of radiation-altered sulfur compounds, substances that barely exist on Earth but thrive in the harsh reality of Io. Every eruption changes the face of the moon. Some plumes blanket entire regions with fine particulates. Others carve new scars into the crust. The volcano Pele, for instance, has been seen generating vast, reddish rings around its vent, evidence of hot material raining back down and reacting with colder terrain. This is not a static world. It is a world in flux, a world of continual destruction and rebirth. And yet, for all its violence, Io is fragile too. Its atmosphere is so thin it barely qualifies as one. Composed mostly of sulfur dioxide, it clings to the surface like a ghost, disappearing entirely when the moon slips into Jupiter's shadow. When the sun returns, it reappears, like breath on a mirror, transient and delicate. Volcanic activity temporarily thickens this atmosphere, injecting it with clouds of gas that swirl briefly before freezing again. These gas flows and frost cycles help to redistribute chemical compounds, subtly altering the moon's appearance with every orbit. Lava flows behave differently here as well. On Earth, lava tends to follow gravity, forming rivers that snake down hillsides. On Io, the lower gravity and extreme temperatures allow molten rock to spread out quickly in thin, broad sheets, sometimes flowing for hundreds of kilometers. It creates vast, overlapping layers, burying everything in its path. There are almost no visible craters on Io, not because none exist, 
but because the surface renews itself so often that impacts don't have time to last. In geological terms, it's a baby, a restless, volatile, newborn world. Eos volcanoes don't follow familiar rules. Many don't even erupt from mountaintops. Instead, they emerge from cracks and fissures, fractures in the crust where pressure forces magma through the surface. Massive calderas form when the ground above an emptying magma chamber collapses inwards. Some of these, like Loki Patera, are so large and so active that they can be seen from Earth using infrared telescopes. Loki periodically brightens dramatically as its surface crust overturns and sinks into the lava lake below, an eruption cycle so regular it almost seems orchestrated. And Io's mountains? They're no less strange. Rising from its tortured plains are sharp, jagged peaks like Steeple Mountain, a towering structure between five and seven kilometers high. Unlike mountains on Earth, which are built by plate tectonics and erosion, Io's are formed by uplift and collapse, by the violent stresses of a surface in constant motion. These geological oddities hint at deeper forces below, forces that don't just shape the crust, but shake the moon to its core. For years, scientists believed Io might be hiding a global magma ocean beneath its surface, a sea of molten rock responsible for its explosive personality. But recent data from NASA's Juno mission tells a different story. As Juno made repeated flybys, it mapped the moon's gravity in fine detail. The results suggest a more complex interior, not one vast magma ocean, but many separate magma chambers scattered beneath the crust. Each one feeds its own volcanic system, cycling through phases of pressure, eruption, and collapse. This explains why activity on Io is so diverse, why one region might be bursting with lava while another lies silent. These chambers aren't connected. They're local, isolated pockets of fury. Some, like Loki, show rhythmic patterns, clear evidence of internal cycles. Others erupt unpredictably, their behavior dictated by factors we're only beginning to understand. Even now, Io's secrets continue to unfold. Juno has discovered over 40 lava lakes on its surface, some up to 100 kilometers wide. These molten pools bubble quietly, their surfaces occasionally cracking and releasing brilliant waves of heat. Some are ringed by glowing cliffs, evidence of active circulation between the magma and the airless cold above. Juno's high-resolution instruments have also revealed structures never before seen, like vertical walls, jagged peaks, and rift valleys unlike anything else in the solar system. In the end, Io challenges our understanding not only of moons, but of planets, geology, and the very forces that shape worlds. It's a reminder that the universe is not static. It is alive, shifting, collapsing, erupting, and evolving. Io is more than a moon. It is a crucible of cosmic violence, a place where nature tests its limits. And as our probes and telescopes continue to watch, we're not just observing a distant satellite. We're witnessing a story still being written, one plume at a time. Every flash of heat, every collapse of crust, every burst of sulfur into the thin atmosphere is a note in a grand symphony of motion and fire. Io is a world that shouldn't exist, but does. And in doing so, it forces us to rethink everything we thought we knew about what a moon what a world can be.